I spent many a years in the catacombs of Akanon, learning under the stern teachings of Ever Excores about the ways of healing and the power we draw through Batoxilus and his allegorical plague. Years passed, and then a scroll crossed my desk. It told of Batoxilus coming, and the green murk that now fills the lands of Karana. I am to travel to Kinos, where I am to meet a sprightly bunch of adventurers who agreed to show me around before I tend to my studies in Nora's feudal plains. Eva gave me some food, drink, and a few spells to send me on my way. It was odd at first dealing with these large individuals. Some were stronger and others weaker. I found myself trying different forms of treatment to keep them aloft, but found at times with the spells I had scribed that I was not ready for such a task. I've only studied scrolls of healing, and their intended use, but the ferocity for which they attacked the creatures of Kinos was not something I was akin to. Medical Diary Entry 1 It was odd at first indeed to see the varied races of our party. The two Quadadal were rather tall, with a pale sheen and leaf-shaped ears. The paladin tended to thrive in battle, while the enchanter used magic. The humans must have been twins, but their skills in battle were vastly different. The rogue stayed after the monsters we fought, doing quick and precise attacks, whilst the ranger used his strength to slash and kick. Personal notes. I found refuge in a hideaway. It's damp and drips with a vile essence of mold and moss. A perfect home away from home, if you ask me. The company I'm with has helped me with selling the scraps I find on the corpses we leave in our wake. I guess I trust them, for now. After we spent some time in Kino's proper, we moved to the damp under catacombs to see what kind of foes lingered in such a place. There were beggars, rats, and all sorts of mischief we could get into. While exploring, there was one thing grossly apparent. We should not have been there, and were far beyond our capabilities. One wrong turn, and I know not what peril that would beset us. It was odd indeed. In one turn, you would find a frogman saunting past, find another corridor, and you would see bandits hiding in wait. We left post-haste, but was able to take notes along the way. Medical Diary Entry 2 Everyone seems to be advancing well. I notice myself able to lend aid more now than hours ago. The Ranger and Paladin are now doing much more damage than previous, as we pried a pair of rusted cladmores from a pile of skeletons. I found a metal mace laying in the pile of bodies and felt it was better than the cudgel that I had been carrying previously. Personal Notes I was told by a local the colloquial names of the beasts that we should watch for as we set out into Kino's hills. Apparently, they are called the Knolls of Blackborough. They have snarled faces, and while some would say they are akin to a wolf, they are very different indeed. Ah, I did find a learned fellow who told me the name of the frogman, his frog lock. In his research, he found that they now live in the ruins of an old troll city called Guck.
It wasn't long before we were entrenched in battle with the Blackboro Moles. They were fierce, and while it felt at some points that we might lose the fight, we pushed forward and completed the task at hand. We saw a barbarian not far in the distance who was pulling the canines from the bodies of the fallen gnolls. We spoke with him for a while, and he said that Captain Tillon in Kino South would pay well for their fangs. A mysterious person seems to be roaming the hills nearby. She is stern and does not seem to mind me yet. Query. I have seen her kill a poor soul who was attacked by a wolf. A rabid one at that. When the human died, the wolf went on its way. And so did she. After the group of us had several fangs, we went on to Kinos to see this Captain Tillin. As he did not kill me instantaneously, I approached. I said nothing, just held my hand up with four fangs that had half-broken roots towards his face. He looked at me odd. Maybe I smelled my putrid dwelling, or he sensed the corruption flowing through me by Batoxilus's grace. He scoffed, handed me four stones, and sent me on my way. A local trader lined my pockets with several silver. As I walked away, he smiled and stared deeply into the gems. Once we left the town, we continued our adventure. Soon, I hoped to seek out the local cleric's guild in hopes to access new scrolls from my book.